Hello and welcome back to Wisconsin Family. As you can see, we are still here at Rubens Furniture having a lovely time and we've got ourselves a guest. We do have ourselves a guest. <laughs> so you may recognize this guest. It's John Shear of Trinity Financial Planning and we're so glad to have you today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me back. So last time we spoke with you, we talked a little bit about college planning and I personally thought that was just great tips. You gave us some information that I wasn't aware of. So we're gonna pick your brain again, and we're gonna talk a little bit about some fundamentals of financial planning. So for folks at home who are, maybe don't know where to start, maybe it's a little bit overwhelming to them, let's give just some basic things that you can do to get started. You bet, this, this is a real timely topic that with kids going back to school and getting back to the basics, we just wrote a post on our blog about the basic building blocks of financial success. We call those the fundament, the five fundamentals of fiscal fitness. So very alliterative. Yes, no, um, I like that. But so, the, so they are um, to make sure that you pay yourself first and save enough money in long-term permanent savings, to have enough liquidity so you can ride out the bumps in the road, to have enough insurance so that you can protect yourself against catastrophe, oh, Okay. to own the proper size house and avoid consumer debt. So yeah. if folks can do those five things, they do pretty well in life. And consumer debt, tips. that's that's uh, things outside of a typical mortgage and, and that sort of thing, yeah, like we, credit yeah. card debt is e what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly, we define good debt and bad debt. Right. Bad debt is uh, when you have debt on something that, that loses value over time, like sure. your car becomes worth less and less over time, sure. your house will become worth more and more over time, or your college education pays you more and more. So right. the bad debt things, credit card and auto loans, those are the two big ones to mm -hmm. avoid. Sure, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So now. Um, um, if, if five things seems like it's too much too much to tackle all at once, are there some fundamentals that are more important than others? I mean, you talked about paying yourself first and things like that. Mm -hmm. what, what, what would be the priorities? Sure, and, and, and all five of those really are important, but if it's, if it's just, hey, to get started, the first one and the last one, like any good story, the beginning and the end are yeah. the best parts, right? right. So it's um, pay yourself first. If you can do that and put money into long-term permanent savings in your retirement plan through work, and if you can do the last one and avoid credit card debt and auto loan debt. Oh, you do absolutely. those two things, you've got a great basis for moving forward on things. It's, it's, not, it's not simple, right? But it's not easy to do. Yeah, avoiding yeah. debt was a, is <clears throat> such a huge one. I always say zero is a great place to be. Yeah. It might not be much, but it's not <laughs> negative. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but when you're talking about saving, so obviously a huge important component for everybody as you age, it's important to have that nest egg. How do you know how much is enough? It's so hard to know if you're saving enough or putting enough away. Yeah, that, that's the magic question. And of course, it's unique for everybody. Each situation is different, but a good guideline is to take the age that you start saving and subtract 15 from that and then put that percent of money away on, on a long-term basis. So if you start when you're age 25, 25 minus 15, you do 10% of your salary, you're in good shape. If you wait until you're 35 to start, 35 minus 15, 20% is about where you have to be. And if you wait until you're 45, then you got to be looking at that 30% range. It goes up over time because of the compound interest. So, you know, everybody knows the earlier you start, the better. That's one metric to kind of say, hey, here's a ballpark for you. Thank you for demystifying that. That yeah. is such a great rule of thumb for people because I think that's a huge question for folks as you get older and start going, oh gosh, maybe I didn't put enough away. There's a simple equation to get you going. Yeah, absolutely. So now we talked a little bit about debt. I mean, it's impossible to avoid debt altogether. In, in our uh, in our current society, but you talked about the good debt and bad debt. Can you give us some examples of how we can avoid that bad debt? Well, you know, it comes down to again really basic things, not easy but basic. That with the credit cards, don't buy anything that you can't pay off at the end of the month. Right. You know, and it's you so know de delayed gratification, and again, not very complicated, but mm -hmm. it's not easy in, in today's world to do those sort of things. Right. And similar thing, you know, automobiles, it's hard to get into a car now, but if you can hold the car for a longer period of time, don't get a brand new car every three years. Right. Yeah. Make it last five or seven <laughs> years, and then you right. get to a point where you don't have to have a car payment all the time. Right. Um, but it's, again, not, not real complicated, but boy, it's having that discipline to do those things and mm -hmm. to, to really live in more of a cash base, yes. using a, uh, a debit card rather than a credit card, right? You can't spend more than what you have in the bank, those types of things. So right. smart. Yeah. That's so smart about, like, when you talk about cars specifically, it's so tempting to go out and get a brand new car, but... But it feels so good when you pay it off. I it's know, like, I was just gonna say, the like, fear of the debt is not as great as right. the, you know, joy of having the new vehicle yeah. to me. Yeah. But um, let's talk a little bit, before we go, I, we've got about a minute left, but I wanna talk about sort of a, an emergency fund. 
People talk about that all the time, that you need to have an emergency fund. What should that look like? How much? Yeah, that's you know, the, the second fundamental, proper liquidity. And so what we look at is 10% of your annual income in the bank someplace, cash where you could write a check on it, and then another 20% in emergency reserves could be in the bank and CDs, those sorts of things, for people that have steady W-2 paychecks. For self-employed folks, we look to double those numbers because there's typically more volatility in their cash flow. Yeah. Great, that's awesome. Yeah. Good tip. And uh, just one other thing, for people who would like an in-depth look at the five, five fundamentals of fiscal fitness, where can they find more information? Sure, this is a good overview, but on our website, which is uh, www.trinfin.com, uh, our blog, we wrote a recent post on that that gives a little bit more detail on those things, so folks can feel free to go there and take a look. Perfect. There's a lot of good information on that blog, too. I so like, I like that website, to too. That Trinfin. Trinfin, that's yeah. right. <laughs> well, this is John Shear, smart guy from Trinity Financial Planning. Thanks so much for having Thank us. Thank you. Or, joining us rather and giving us these great tips and uh, we'll have you back great no we will we're going to be joined next by flight cycle and we're excited to have them as well we're talking fitness here on wisconsin family stick around